frankly, I think this is one of the most important things that we can talk about as it relates to developing smart cities, smart communities, innovation districts, what have you. Um, how are the technologies going to work together? We've addressed that with, with GCTC and standards development, blueprint development. Um, how are we going to align policies to enable it? Our elected officials um, and, and public officials have spoken a little bit about that. And then how are we going to pay for it all? Um, and how are we going to pay for it all is what Oscar is going to speak to. Uh, so with that, I'd like to welcome to the stage Oscar Bodie, who is the CEO of Smart City Capital. Oscar. It is absolutely phenomenal to be Lasso. <laughs> it's uh, good that at least we have a few people left. And I will try to be very fast. Uh, but it is an important subject, right? I think one of the things that you're going to find uh, the, uh, the way that we've approached this is to have safe, smart, and sustainable cities. And that's because the, uh, if you just go straight to the smart cities and the business aspect of it, then uh, you won't be able to... Are we going to take it? Just, just real quick, we can't hear him. I got, I got my... Oh, you yep. do? Yep. Okay. I'll say. Thank you, though. Um, so, again, we were able to combine and, and uh, issue this S3, which is uh, sustainability uh, as well. So one of the key things that you're going to see that we we're highlighting here, if we lost our picture. Okay, so I'm gonna send the deck out later, but the, the key thing is we created Smart City Capital because there was two main focuses. No matter the city project that you're doing, whether it be in the United States, in Latin America, Europe, there's two fundamental issues. One is know-how, and by that I mean there's a lot of free information that cities are spending budget instead of creating the, 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 the project to pay a consultant to regurgitate the same information that they got paid the last city. It could be a few hundred thousand, a few million dollars. Uh, but then also bringing together the ecosystem. You could have, you know, you'll see a, a, a presentation where somebody says this pen is a smart city pen and the pen's going to save your world. Few people actually know how to do that. And there's a group of very experienced project manager companies, technology companies, and in my personal experience at being in 20 plus projects so far, there's about 12 to 15 core companies, and that includes lighting, infrastructure, uh, and management. So it's not that many. And the other equally important aspect is the variable risk funding. By that I mean is the ability to uh, obtain funding to do a project is no longer just a bond or a secured structured debt. A majority of these projects uh, have and require a new asset class. Big data, as you've read in many other uh, publications, is the new oil. So you can't use bond structures to have a variable risk component where you're monetizing either data or saving share. So the ability to these cities to understand this new asset class even multi-billion dollar uh, budget cities, they cannot just take 100, 200 million dollars. And then the other di the distinction is there was one company that was donating the initial fiber or maybe a kiosk along the city, but you can't make a intelligent smart city infrastructure on a static implementation. I gave it one time. It has to have tech refresh, has to be maintained, et cetera. So we're able to understand that the top four are the key um, uh, variables and challenges. The know-how and the funding, as I stated, the ability to have the uh, limited budgets. So what the city will do, they'll do 10%, 5% of what they need. It'll take two years to do maybe the next 10%. And by the time they're actually halfway through the implementation, the first implementation is no longer valid. It's obsolete. So how do we do these projects so they can do the entire scope? They can do it in a in truncated time. The other project in the past, there was over one large service provider had more than 20 pilots. Everybody would accept a $250,000, $200,000 pilot. Nobody had the money to exit the pilot. So what's the sense of a pilot if, if you can't implement it? And then finally, the adoption challenges. If it takes one to two years where cities are just trying to think about it 10 different ways, then a lot of large companies that have been supporting smart cities will exit the, the market if they can't make any revenue after investing two years' worth. So we need to truncate that time. So the model that we put together was to challenge, uh, to solve that, right? The know-how, the funding, the ability to take a project that was two years, do it less than nine months, eventually in six months. The other aspect is the tier two, tier three cities, they were pretty much being left out because either they were in a rural area, agricultural area, too little, and the ability to combine these projects into something that was sustainable was important. 
So that's what we see on the bottom half of how we're able to solve it. Some of the things that we discussed here, we have a big push in the rural ag area. We don't look at those assets any longer to 10,000 homes or only very limited low socioeconomic uh, income. It's an intelligent corridor. So we will look at it, how many trucks, how many vehicles, et cetera. So the ability to look at the new asset class and then value it on its long-term perspective is important. And being able to leverage the, uh, the, the ecosystem that we put together, more than a billion plus in equity and multiple sources from uh, private family houses as well as institutional investors. It's also important that less than about 8% of all projects done over the last 15 years have actually been in the United States public-private partnerships. So even though it's very big topic now, there's very little experience here at a scale level across the US. That's not the case in Australia and, and Canada and Europe. So our funding sources that we brought in have been doing public-private partnerships starting in Australia for more than 25 years. So they're highly experienced of how to run it. We've also put together an ecosystem of top project management companies, A&E firms, that are running entire cities. So that's very important when you're running these projects for 10 to 20 years plus, you need to have the ability to have a very skilled um, infrastructure company. And then on the funding side, we have all investment grade type funds. We partner here uh, with the PNC Bank, ING Bank, uh, other uh, equity firms on top of, of that to complement the senior debt. The centers are uh, just uh, some of the initial projects and products, five plus, 20 year, 30 year, uh, we have the ability to take either budget neutral, combine it with the equity, multiply every dollar that a city can make into maybe seven, 10 times. More than 80% of the projects that we're engaged, the city is expected to pay nothing. The concession is how they're able to substanti substantiate that. We do focus on neutral host carrier for broadband for all. And then once you have that, you have the ability to connect all the rest. On the bottom, on the right side is the typical, the projects that we look at, they tend to, we look at either a million dollar, we're doing, uh, started with a small project, when uh, the uh, Peachtree Corners in Georgia, but that is project of about a million dollars is if it's standalone, we're able to then be able to, uh, uh, you know, take, I'm sorry, $5 million if it's standalone, a million if it's on a portfolio basis. And then we try to do multiple projects, uh, whether it be multiple cities or multiple use cases uh, across the same project. So go quick through how do we do it? Again, using the portfolio approach, we bring in the entire solution end to end, hardware, software, uh, operations, the project management and the funding so we can do a BOFT, build, operate, finance, transfer. We can uh, execute the project from a technology, services, strategy. We also, again, sharing information that we're able to take from another city in the US that we are aware of share that information for free with the city so they can all of a sudden look at a peer city and say, this is how they wrote it, this is the language, this is the engagement, this is the policy. Policy is number one. We were advising now a lot of the cities where they were doing five separate projects that would have had the potentiality of having conflicting interests, conflicting data sharing, to start to leverage a platform where they have one project manager or one partner do all smart city projects to avoid a lot of these issues, maximize the revenue share, savings share, and then even larger cities could then bring in smaller underserved areas, large universities that in most cases have an underserved area around it, leverage them to kind of, again, do a portfolio approach of a project that's now viable. And then you're able to use the construction, whether they use a con concession, a P3 contract, we can create a new special purpose vehicle uh, or use an existing uh, entity. That's a, a, a replicable way of doing any one of the five or six top use cases. This I'll just go through, again, we'll go into a, a community and for example, instead of looking at uh, underserved of just doing new fiber, we will partner with a utility company, electric utility company. They, we can also partner with a, uh, a large manufacturer in the ag business that wants to have a state-of-the-art manufacturing. They would then absorb 40 to 50% of the uh, intended costs. So we bring in uh, specific stakeholders. So we're able to approach these projects in a much different way. Safety is covered. We'll bundle a non-monetizable project with a monetizable project. Again, safety and security is not, but if you can use the excess capacity, and as you get to 5G that you can actually cut the layers, the ability of excess capacity that can be monetized will fund the entire project plus maybe two other projects. So we guide the uh, cities to how to best bring these uh, projects together to maximize coverage of projects that 
really would have never been monetizable. The rest here, and again, I'll send this to you guys, it just shows how that, that project of bringing the smart lighting with the fiber, with the uh, energy savings, in fact, some of the smart transportation projects that we're engaged in started as a maintenance contract. They wanted to reduce the cost of a city bus maintenance in half by putting the sensors and the applications, the revenue and the saving share was generating about 130% of what the project need was. And that included kiosk and all of these types of, of, of additional interest. Again, small to read because it's intended to be that way. We would then generate three revenue sources, not just one. So we would look at, again, on a typical project where we try to push the neutral host or broadband for all. Uh, on top of that, then that, will, that can generate substantial revenue. Then we'll add the additional use cases like connected sensors plus uh, the traditional ESCO component on the savings uh, share on the energy for lighting. Uh, and then there's some additional resources. We'll put all those revenue sources into one. Uh, the cities, even if they are not putting one dime in, they still are eligible for the coverage of the entire project plus revenue share. So if you can generate to a city like maybe a city like Atlanta that you could cover the served and underserved and over a 20-year contract, they may see four or five hundred million dollars worth of value over a 20-year period. That never happened before. And so the ability that having the connected health, connected transportation, safety, on top of uh, things that actually bring in economic development, uh, we have a big passion for the education side, that's a big uh, component. Last part that's most important here is I think the ability to leverage and thanking uh, Zach and Mitch and the team, I think the work that they're doing here is phenomenal and uh, is a big connection from what we've been trying to do because going city by city is, is very challenging. Leveraging this challenge that, uh, that this team has put together and that we can participate in allows us a platform to work with multiple cities. Also have, which we have not done, is a maybe a federal approach where we can get a top-down support and, and have multiple cities impacted at once. And so through this challenge, we've kind of established the fact that if we're able to work and identify a winning and secondary and third place solution where we can leverage multiple cities, maybe combine tier two, tier three cities that could be from 30,000, 50,000 residents up, uh, create a program that we're able to solve the broadband, which has the education, connected health, bring in all those types of use cases uh, like transportation, safety, and then be able to apply to areas that were being ignored as well as served. I don't want to ignore uh, large cities, right? Again, if we have the opportunity through this process to have a winning challenge that combines a New York City with an underserved city or maybe Atlanta with uh, uh, small cities in Louisiana, that's a winning solution. So through this challenge, we'll be uh, able to identify uh, the top prize would be up to $10 million. Uh, it doesn't mean that if we saw a project that would be bigger than that and it makes business sense that we wouldn't support it because, again, the money is not the issue. We have more than enough money to do any project. We just want to do the right projects. And then the, you see the kind of the key components. We really want to look for projects that have that portfolio approach. If we can preferably start with that neutral host carrier or that broadband for all as a backbone, and then bring in two or three other multiple use cases attached to it, that would be great, but it's not a requirement. And then have the type of uh, concession terms, 10 plus 20 years, and again, whether it's 10 years or 20 years is a direct correlation. If we're talking to a $5 million investment or 50 million or 500 million, there are some projects that we're looking at where one county would need 1.3 billion in one P3. So the types of projects that are here are quite large. Uh, so the ability to leverage the success factor would be important. The, the final thing is then on, on the next steps. We really want to make sure that we're able to develop a working team. Even throughout this process, we'll be glad to provide any aid and assistance because, again, the more projects that are eligible to be uh, executed and made real, I think everybody wins. And so even though uh, we may only have the three winners, we would be happy to support any viable working cluster or team that can actually derive a real project and then be able to uh, start to share whatever information we can so teams that can benefit or cities can benefit through this process will share what information, some of the language, the process, some of the compliance things to uh, consider and leverage, and then hopefully uh, have two 
or to have the three winning teams, but also have other teams that maybe we can guide them on how to work together and combine two previously individual teams into a, a better joint team. So from that perspective, I think this is very, very important. Uh, and th that's it from our side. I try to make it very short just to catch up to, to, to uh, share some of the thoughts, but we really are very happy um, that, that we can do this. We I used to run the, uh, the uh, emerging markets uh, Cisco Capital for 17 years, and before that with Hewlett Packard, so we know that we understand the pain points, not only from what the cities need, but the companies trying to address smart cities. Because of these very long time cycles, a uh, private entity trying to support these projects can't put it on their books. Even a company with billions can't do an unlimited amount because they would have to have deferred revenue and they would have to uh, recognize the expense up front. The fact that we have an issue that solves the private sector problem because we would be paying them traditional net term basis, that allow us to have more companies to bring in. The viable applications, which are tend to be startups that wouldn't have the wherewithal to do it, we can support their challenges and then pivot back to what the city needs uh, on those five or six main use cases. So from that standpoint, we're, we're honored to be part of this and I, I can't uh, be uh, more pleased with the work that this team is doing and we're very, very honored and happy that we had an opportunity to be part of it. So thank you.